So this talk is uh, sort of a question in the form of a statement because it's about this intuition that I can't really substantiate, but I'm hoping that you will help me figure it out. So here we go. Uh, I was thinking about online transaction processing at the time as an example, and uh, here's the context. Big database, constant stream of incoming updates and queries. Not like a lot of benchmarks where the data are fixed and how fast can you do something to a graph. Need a lot of cores to handle the work. Uh, we have to sum over many variables. We're going to use our standard trick of caching, but that means we have to synchronize updates with invalidates in the cache if we're going to be correct. And uh, caching implies replication, and now we have to propagate the updates or propagate the invalidates or something. And so, uh, again, too much computation, not trivially scalable, uh, inputs changing, there's no such thing as subspace radio, right? Communication is finite and limiting. And uh, I'm going to give you some definitions so you understand more about where I'm coming from. Here, uh, throughput, you know, uh, Bell and Howell Filmo sound, anyone else use that in, in school? <laughs> Versus IMAX projector, a lot more throughput. Uh, the approach to the Lincoln Tunnel, lots of throughput. Capablanca playing a bunch of simultaneous games of chess, a lot of throughput. So, you know, what we're after is scaling. Of course, the, the constants matter too, but I'm just gonna, I'm think, I'm gonna think mostly about scaling here and say, you know, for some reasonable single core performance, if it scales better, that's better throughput. More work being done as we add cores. Latency is really about one core, something on one core affecting something that's happening in another core. And I want to look at the data structure algorithm level, like do we use race and repair and failure oblivious? Do we use RCP? Do we use atomics in C11? Uh, what kind of data, you know, we, we saw the, uh, all the different cues that um, in the um, FIFO paper. Those will have different latencies as well. And one interesting question is, well, what's the best possible latency if you used any data structure? So uh, I actually tried to measure this, and I, I'll just do it for the shared memory stuff. And I built a, a simple ring counter, analogous to a ring oscillator, which is how the hardware guys do it. So like you have four cores, the first core propagates the value of D to A, the second core, uh, B to, I mean, A to B, the third core, B to C, and then the, I mean, the third, and the fourth core increments it, right? So the values circulate around and around and get incremented once uh, per round trip through, and these things are just four cores running in tight loops. And so you can take the total time that takes, divide by how much the counter increases, divide by the number of cores, and you get kind of the time for the change made by one core to affect the next core. And, you know, I measured that on my handy dandy retina power book, and uh, those are the numbers, uh, maxes and mins, and it's a four core eight way SMT, and of course, cutting down on the CPU for each thread doesn't change the latency measurement by much, which is why it's flat, so sort of between 35 and 40 nanoseconds per handoff. And then if you stick a memory barrier in there, of course, well, I say of course, it's a bit more. And you could do this for other platforms. It'd be really interesting to do it for platforms with a lot of cores. You could use signals. You could use atomics. So here's the intuition. We do all this work. We optimize stuff. We come up with like the best thing we can. And if the latency relative to this best possible is say 10 times worse for our data structure, and maybe the throughput, you know, is a, is a quarter as it scales. If we come up with some new trick to raise the throughput, the latency will get worse too. So the intuition, now, just a rough intuition, but people voted they wanted to hear it, so okay, is, uh, you know, kind of the space of the best algorithms has this trade-off. That is, there isn't really a free lunch in this thing. And um, thank you. Of course, there are a lot of variables. 
I may finish early, have time for questions. Wouldn't that be cool? Um, the number of readers, the number of writers, contention is always a big variable here. Uh, whether we're talking about throughput of reading or writing, are we using loads and stores, atomic, hardware atomic ones, all, you know, so we can talk about this and we may find the meat is really in there. But I'm gonna just do a very simple, stupid example that I, I uh, kind of stole from Paul's Perf book, which is a lovely book. I, I really recommend it, taught me a lot. I should have had the link up here, but if you Google for a Paul McKenney Perf book, you'll find it, it's online. So we have a counter, uh, we're just doing serial for start, the write code is, you know, a load add store, I wrote it as C plus equals delta, the read is just a read of C, the counter. The latency is tiny because I'm only talking one core at the moment, you know, that's really great latency. And the throughput is lousy because it's just running on one core. So we uh, do a parallel version, we do mutexes because that's like the simplest way to, to think about it. Um, and assuming we have the single word atomicity stuff that, you know, kind of holds in reality for my reality, but not everywhere, of course. The read code is still simple. Uh, the latency is small unless the writers start to convoy. Uh, the throughput is higher, but the writers do have this locking and contention overhead. So we go to lock free, we're, we're clever people. And we use, uh, you know, an atomic, uh, basically, increment over there. And, uh, of course, that needs a retry loop if we're doing it like with a compare and swap under the covers. Uh, so that means that if there's contention, the writers can actually starve. And, you know, I was kind of assuming we had some nice handy-dandy fair lock library we were using before. So um, that could... Uh, potentially hurt the latency, you know, because some particular writer could start. Uh, throughput's higher as long as we don't have these high contention writers. Uh, we could have per thread counters, right? This makes the, the writes real easy. We just add to the, our local counter. The reads are slow, you have to do the sum. The latency is really high when there are a lot of cores because you have to do the sum over a lot of cores to see the change. Uh, the throughput's really great for the writers. So latency's worse, throughput's better for the writer, but it's low for the readers. So what do we do? We stick a cache in there. Now we've got the same thing going, but we have some thread just going around adding these things up, maintaining a, a cache of sum. And, um, the latency could be even higher because that one thread's doing the cached sum, that core may have other stuff to do. You may catch it in the middle of a loop and you might have to wait for a loop and a half. The throughput uh, is pretty high for both readers and writers because the writers are just incrementing the per thread variable and the readers are just reading the cache. And then you have the race and repair you know, where you say, what me worry, the sort of Alfred E. Newman school of programming. And the latency could be really high because you can lose counts. So now you've got a few infinities to stick into your average latency computation. Uh, but, you know, the throughput is probably the highest of anything because things just blast along. So that's a very rough example. And uh, I'm going to conclude with at least five minutes left. So this is great because you can uh, get questions or set me straight or whatever. But, you know, I'm looking at throughput, how much work gets done overall, how fast changes on one core propagate to another because I'm thinking of a world where inputs are coming in all the time and changing the data. Uh, lots of dimensions to look at this. I decided to really boil this talk down for today. And I think, I think there's a trade-off in here somewhere because it, it seems like if you go to in, uh, increase throughput, you need more things happening at the same time, which seems like you need more state that's distributed or replicated, smeared around the system, 
which seems like it's got to increase the latency because the state is more geographically smeared, so it's got to be more time to propagate changes. Okay, so that's, that's this talk. Thank you very much. We have some time for questions, corrections, setting me straight, all that stuff. Thank you. Yeah. So, so uh, your point is that it depends a lot on the implementation. Uh, and gosh, I agree. And that's something that's uh, a real killer about this whole field, is that we don't seem to be able to hide implementation details anymore like we used to. And, you, and you're nodding the head, your head, so that's good. I did this experiment for my talk last year uh, where I tried um, uh, uh, mitigation you know, algorithms that were, had non-determinism and checked and could drop things off from adding to the set, basically. And which one worked was very dependent on which hardware I was using. So, yeah, but I would say that for any given implementation, I still kind of think this has to hold some how. Would you disagree with that? Great. I, I, I got it. Thanks a lot, Hans. Uh, Paul, did you, were you your hand up earlier? It was, it was, it was kind of interesting. You had a definition of latency, and uh, it's similar to the one that was used in the queuing example, which is, you know, the time, the, the count, from the time that the person started their count, uh, increased the count thing until the reader would see it visibly. Um, and that's, that's a, a good one, but there's some other possible ones. Another one would be the latency of the operation So where I'm coming from is some input comes in like the price of a stock changes, say, and how long does it take for that to propagate through to some other core to give me a different trading decision? And that's why I used the definition I did. I'm not sure what other definitions would suit that starting point. Um, yeah, back then. So are you saying that once you pass this sweet spot, you lose throughput and latency both? Um, maybe, yes. I didn't think about latency, but we definitely lose throughput again. Okay, well, let's... I wouldn't be surprised if we actually lose latency as well. Okay. Well, let's come back to that during the open discussion, if you like. Uh, I have, anyone want to say something in 10 seconds? 
Okay, great. I'll yield the time back to the floor. Thanks, guys. <laughs>